<laughs> okay, everybody. So this is the next video in the series. Now my mic broke. Um, as you two of my mics broke, my fancy one and my headset. So I'm using the webcam for the noise. So let me know if it's good or bad. Um, and if not, I'll try and fix one of the mics before the next one, anyways. Um, so. Uh, what happened yesterday was I had to cram for loads of assignments. So basically, I've already uploaded the Minecraft video. Um, I actually uploaded this video already, um, but the video got could, had no noise because of the mics. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna upload another video of the same stuff. So basically, what I did in that video was I told you my tips of cramming. Um, so I'll go through them again. So. Uh, tip number one is first plan out uh, everything you're going to do. So before you start to cram, write out a list of everything you want to get done by the end of the cram um, and keep a track of it. So you can cross off stuff when they're done and you can go through it and things like that. And that makes it easier for you to see the timeline to make sure you get to the end goal. Um, it doesn't really matter how much time you have to cram unless it's like obviously an hour or something. If you have a day, usually you can cram most subjects for university into a day. Um, but things like big reports and stuff, theses, things that require manual power, they will usually take a few days. Um, I'd say the fastest I have done about an 85-page report was in maybe three or four days. Okay, so uh, that's going extremely fast and not getting off the pier and not sleeping. Um, I did a 45-page report over the last few days. Um... It probably took me four or five days, and I did pull one all night here, um, and two very late nights. So you, you can kind of think big reports, they can't really be crammed. So try and make sure you do them or have parts of them done so you can put them in the report at the end. Um, other things, all right, so useful tips for cramming. So yeah, uh, plan it out. Next tip is... Um, there's different types of learning, so obviously it depends on what kind of learner you are. You could be the one who does really good with um, writing things out loads of times. That's kind of what I am for tests anyways. I just, first of all, write out the notes. Um, so it could be get your lecture your slides, cross out the things you don't need, write down the notes you do need. Then write them out again and then write them out again. Once you've write, written them three times, you should remember them if you're kind of right one who remembers that way. So that's how I tend to remember for exams when it's very, very fast. I need to get a lot of information in my brain. Write out three times all the notes and I usually remember and then read it obviously before the exam. Um, if you're more of a visual learner um, rather than someone who needs to do something to kind of beat it into them, um, if you're more visual, um, it's a good idea to use uh, things like flashcards or things with uh, a lot more visual things, diagrams, colors, sometimes uh, my maps are really useful. Um, so if you're more visual, that could be helpful to you. If you're more audible, um, making up uh, songs, stories, um, anything that you can say to yourself in your head, um, or sing or whatever uh, would be very uh, good for you. So say, for example, um, there is also another thing. Say if you're, you could be audible, but it could be for languages and stuff. Um, you could use different words to associate different words together. So, um, for example, you had to learn words for a language. Um, the most common way you see people do this is with the sticky note. Um, they use associative thinking. I think that's what's called, anyways. But basically, you write down a word that um, means something. So, say we had a piece of wood. Wood, uh, we'd write the word wood in it. But wood is related to tree, so we'd write the word for tree on it. We'd, trees are associated with life, so we'd write life on it. Um, they're associated with uh, green. Um, whatever you could have the color of the wood brown um, and basically you put like five words on a sticky note stick it somewhere and then you remember I wouldn't put more than five words on it because trying to remember more than five at the same time is going to take you a long time so five things associated with one object will make you remember faster that's if you're kind of a mix of the things more visual um, because you'll what you do is you'll think back in your brain you'll remember the object and you'll be like all right, wood, 
wood, tree, whatever, you remember the sticky note. And that's really good actually for if you have to not cram, that's good for longer term learning um, because it drills it into your head all the time. So what I do is I don't, I don't use that much. I did use it for a bit when I was trying to learn um, Irish over again. Um, so, but what I do use it for is say if I have like um, an exam coming up in two or three days um, for a, like a mathematical exam where I have to remember the equation for the exam, I will stick that equation everywhere I think something's associated with the equation. So say if it was, um, what would be a good one? All right, I have an exam coming up that I need to know like uh, plasticity um, equations. So anything that is like fixed and plastic, I'm going to stick it up. That's pretty much it. And that's how I'm going to remember that. Um, so you might actually see that in the next week or so with sticky notes behind, well, probably two weeks, because I think it's the last exam. Um, you'll see it's stuck up here somewhere on a bit of plastic. I'll probably stick it on that whiteboard case with the markers, because that's plastic. Um, just so I remember it. You might see other notes and stuff coming up over the next weeks, because I have exams coming up. Um, other tips. Um, so yeah, anagrams are a way people learn. Um, anagrams are only for specific types of things, though. They're basically, um, basically, the fact you're making up the anagram will make you remember it, and then for therefore the anagram also makes you remember it. So it's like two ways of remembering something. It's kind of like writing out the sheet loads of times because that's making you remember. If you write out the sheet loads of times, um, and then reading it is another way to remember it. So it's just a tool to shorten what you have to remember. Um, so it's similar as if you would remember a song for something like say the periodic table or whatever. Um, a good example of this is how we learn the alphabet. So most people learn the alphabet through A, A B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Um, so they learn the a song version of it, um, which is actually the same as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, if you want to think about that, um, but other, it's the same in other things. Like for example, um, even just saying things over over again will remember it the same way. Um, so, for example, when I was fifteen, I learned the Greek alphabet, um, but I only learned that from reading a book over and over and over and over again. So um, I read it over and over and over for about five minutes walking home. Um, and that's how I learned the Greek alphabet, and I haven't forgotten now. So um, I'll probably actually we'll just end the video, and I'll do the Greek alphabet for you. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, psi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, epsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega. And um, I'm not really sure if the pronunciation's right on most of them, but I know they're the letters, and I know what most of them look like from engineering. So it was really, really useful in fifth year when I actually learned that alphabet. Um, because I started to see them a lot more maths, so it was good knowing the layers, it was easier to remember them. Um, so that's that. So I'll see you in the next one. If you like this video, subscribe, and uh, if you want to see any other weird things I can do, um, write down in the comments or anything else. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Good luck.